Okay, next we're gonna take a look at these two problems. So these are problems I've noticed that people make the most mistakes on, so I wanna go over these with you to make sure you don't make the same mistakes. So for solving problems like this, the most common mistake that I see people making is people will divide both sides by x. Now, if you do that, what's gonna happen is you're not gonna get one of the correct answers. You may get one answer, but you may not get the other one. The other reason why you don't wanna do that is because if you divide by x, what if x was zero? then there's a chance that you might be dividing by zero, which is undefined. So let me show you the correct way that you wanna do this particular problem. We're not gonna divide both sides by x. Instead, we're going to move 24x over and we're gonna get it equal to zero. So now that we have a quadratic equal to zero, we can next do factoring. Because I only have two terms here, I'm just gonna be pulling out a common factor. So I look for what's, what goes in evenly into both of these, that's gonna be 4x, so if I uh, take out the 4x, I'm gonna be left with x minus six. So now that I have it set equal to zero, I'm gonna take each one of these individually, set them equal to zero and solve. So I have 4x equals zero, when I divide, I get x is equal to zero. And again, this is not gonna be undefined. I'm not dividing by zero in this case, I'm dividing both sides by four, so that's why I will get a zero, uh, uh, will get zero as the answer. Now the other one is x minus six, I'm gonna set that equal to zero, and then I end up getting six is the answer. So I get two answers here, I get zero and six. So notice if I would've divided both sides by x, I would've gotten the answer of six, but I wouldn't have gotten the answer for zero. So don't divide both sides by x, make sure you subtract, set it equal to zero. Next, we're gonna look at this problem. This is another one where a lot of people make mistakes on, and the most common mistake I see is people will take each of these individually and set them equal to six. You can't do that, you can't take each of these equal to six, that only works if you have a zero on that side because what we're using here is the zero product property. If this section is zero or this section is zero, the whole thing is gonna be zero. But I can't say that about six. If, this is, if I set that equal to six and this equal to six, then that's not gonna work, it's not gonna give me the correct answer. So here's the right way of doing that one. We're going to multiply this out first then subtract the six and get it all equal to zero. So we'll multiply this one out, we get x squared, and I have four x and three x, that's seven x, for the middle terms, and then plus 12, that equals zero, uh, equals six rather. Okay, and now we're gonna subtract six from both sides, and we're gonna get it equal to zero. So we're gonna get x squared plus seven x plus six, because we subtract six from both sides, and now we have it equal to zero. So we multiply this out first, then subtract the six, and now that it's equal to zero, we can factor it. Factors of six that add up to seven would be one and six, so we get one and six here, and that's gonna have to be a plus, because there's all plus signs in there. Now, at this point, this is where you're gonna take both of them and set it equal to zero. You get x plus one equals zero, and so you'll get uh, x is equal to negative one, and then you have x plus six equals zero, and you're gonna get x is equal to negative six. That, those right there would be the correct answer. So again, for this particular problem, if you have any other number over here besides zero, you can't set all, both factors equal to that. You can only do that when you have a zero. So if you don't have a zero on that side, these are two examples where if you don't have a zero, then you gotta manipulate it to where you do get a zero on the right-hand side, so that way you can factor and set them both equal to zero.